Let's talk about HPE. So a couple of different pieces of news. You know, we do cover earnings here on the show. It's the beacon moment of truth for companies, as you so prophetically say, sir, on the regular. Um, but not only did HPE have earnings yesterday after hours, and we had the chance to talk to their CFO, uh, get a little bit more insight from him. More insight. I like that. Um, but Thank you. The, <laughs> the uh, company also announced a multi-billion dollar win from the NSA. That's uh, pretty legit. And then closed uh, a recent orchestration platform that uh, had been purchased, Zerto. Uh, all happening this week. Big, busy week for HPE, Pat. Yeah, it certainly was. And I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, in, in true spirit of what we do, we'll chop up uh, a couple of these. Uh, let, let me start off with uh, this NSA deal. So it's a $2 billion deal over 10 years. Uh, not a lot of detail. Uh, I'd be scared if we had a lot of detail because it's the NSA, but um, it's uh, essentially um, um, an as a service, high performance computing deal, okay? Uh, but I, I, the big picture here to, to me is two things. So first of all, uh, as a service matters, because my guess is, is, is if HP didn't offer this, you know, or or Dell didn't let's say have have Apex, this would a hundred percent chance have gone to a public cloud player. Okay, I view this as a loss for an AWS, uh, a Google Cloud, uh, an Azure, uh, something like that. Um, so you know, I, I can't help but to think: is this kind of the beginning of the uh, the ec somewhat of equity between the public cloud? and the hybrid uh, as a service from the traditional uh, players. So interesting stuff uh, out there. And as I think you'll go through the earnings, that doesn't necessarily show that now is the time uh, for that based on, uh, based on revenue growth. Uh, but uh, the other deal uh, that was, the other thing that uh, related to HP that came out this week, a lot of news, by the way, in one week, I think they could have uh, spread it out there was the, uh, the closing of uh, the Zerto deal. So uh, Zerto is a cloud native aware data protection and resilience that's gonna get sucked right into uh, HPE GreenLake. It's something you have to have. Um, and I'm just, I'm just boggled at the speed of HPE's acquisitions and integrations. Uh, so from a, a revenue standpoint, are a lot smaller than some of the other players and you know early analysis that i made was i was very clear it has to operate five to ten times faster than dell and cisco and even lenovo to to make a difference uh, and the second thing they needed to do and this was regarding dell was to have software capabilities that people actually wanted to invest in and, and I think that we've seen this, whether, you know, it's, it's virtualized environments, uh, containerized based, uh, and then going to the app level where they added um, even to the vertical apps like Epic uh, for, for healthcare. So that's that. How did they do this quarter, Daniel? Yeah. So uh, interestingly, on Zerto, I just want to make one last point. I'll jump in. I think there's like a category here. What do we, what do we, how do you dump that in? Is it operations orchestration, IT ops orchestra? I don't know. I just, I was thinking a lot about that as you were talking. I'm, I, yeah. what, are we, what are we calling this? These it's, days? it's, it's in the, it's in the storage uh, area, data protection. Okay. DP. Yeah. Just, just trying to give it a, I want to, you know, you know, we are, we like to give everything a label. Um, yeah. So HPE had a very interesting result this quarter. Um, it came right in on 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 the level of expectations. Uh, you know, the, there's like this two uh, sort of converging forces in the marketplace. One is there's always that top line number that everybody immediately looks at and says, "How fast are they growing?" Um, and then there's the context. And I think I want to just quickly touch on both. And the top line, the company grew about one percent year over year. Uh, at first glance, people are like, "One percent uh, is that exciting? Should I be happy?" But first of all, the company came in line. Second of all. HPE and Cisco and some of these big IT OEMs, they were hit pretty hard by the pandemic. So this comeback, it's, it's supply chain impacted. It's uh, return to work impacted. It's also you've got a company that's in a business transformation moving from big CapEx sales to more and more as a service revenues. 
So you've got these different forces going on. So at the top line, it's like, yeah, they're doing okay. Um, but when you get underneath the surface, that's where I think the story about HPE becomes more interesting. There was a couple of encouraging top line data points. Like one, their order uh, growth is happening a lot faster than their revenue growth. Their order growth came in at 11%. Company's doing a really good job creating opping. Their, their profitability was up year over year by 28%. So it shows they're operating very efficiently. They also mentioned during this earnings call that they're reinstating share repurchases, which is always a good indicator that the company feels it's undervalued and it's going to start reinvesting in its, itself and, and support the investors that have stuck with the company throughout this pandemic. From a business uh, and operational standpoint, um, you know, the core businesses are looking pretty encouraging. Pat, you mentioned the $2 billion in a sale deal. That's a lot of HPC. That part of the business has, has seemingly been pretty strong. I think they're targeting over 8% growth. The other part that has been really robust has been the intelligent edge. That saw year over year revenue go up by over 20%. I think it was 23% in that business unit. One of the right. most encouraging year over year growth stories for the company. But let's be honest, Pat, the whole story, the big kazoo, was Antonio Neri in 2019 got up on the stage said we're going all in on everything as a service all in again that's great um everything as a service and the whole company by 2022 well listen we're in the like eighth inning of 2021 now so it's time to sort of hold the feet to the fire did the company make this transition into 2022 and how is that going so to achieve the goals for revenue and growth that Neary set out, the company needed to be hitting 30 to 40% growth on a, on a quarterly basis year over year. This quarter, it once again did do that. It came in at 33%, so right in the range. And maybe the look forward encouraging number, Pat, was the 46% growth in the as a service order volume. They also have over 1,100 customers now participating in this green light as a service ecosystem. And the contract value of this uh, business has now reached over $5.4 billion. So, you know, for, for HPE, that's the number to watch. That's the story. You know, growth in the edge, good. IoT, good. HPC, good. But this, the whole foundation of the company going forward goes back to Antonio Neri's 2019 Discover presentation where he said, we're going to be everything as a service in three years. Three years is coming. The numbers so far are encouraging, but you know, again, 5.4 billion um, need to keep pushing that 30 to 40% growth over the next few quarters to show it's executing, but it's been encouraging so far, getting that top line back into seven, eight, 9% along, you know, closer to where ISG from Dell is and where Cisco is these last quarters, I think is gonna be important to give confidence to the outsiders. But some of these numbers beneath that top line are the ones that those that really follow the company should feel encouraged.